Baker, would you offer the invitation? Lord, we just thank you for this day, the way you've seen fit to bless us, everything you give us, and that which you keep away, we all count as a blessing. Lord, watch over our farmers and give them what they need in the right amount in the right time. Put a hand of protection over those in public safety. They protect us, and we want your protection on them. And Lord, as this board meets tonight, we come together and we pray that you grant them the wisdom to do what is right in your sight for the betterment of the citizens of this community so that you will be proud to be here too. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'll stand with you and say amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome this large crowd here tonight. I shouldn't get robbed, but that's what we're showing. <laughs> Out of four is uh, adoption of the agenda. We have a motion and second to adopt the agenda. No discussion. All in favor? All opposed? Item five is approval of financial information for February 2023 and March 2023. Second. Got a motion and a second to approval of the financial information for February 2023 and March 2023. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor? Item six is approval of minutes from previous meetings. Okay. Got a motion and a second to approve the minutes from previous meetings. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor? Is there any public con comments tonight? I have a public comment, sir. All right, go ahead. Um, I have a recommendation and suggestion. The commissioners are a civil service. It should be done on a voluntary basis. I suggest that you guys give up your salary until we get back to a surplus with the uh, Seven is speakers tonight with the Sheriff Andy Hester, operations of the Sheriff's Office. Right. Ben, you got it going, right? Yes, sir. So, I know there's been discussions about budget, and I've met uh, with the county manager and Discuss some issues in my budget. Last commission meeting, uh, some things we discussed in reference to the share uh, as far as traffic fines go. So, I wanted to address the board and also the public since this is live stream, I'm assuming. So, many times, and, I, and let me say this as long as I've been sheriff, we work together as board commissioners and sheriff's office work together. I have a good working relationship and they've done a lot of stuff for this county. I'm elected by the people of this county to perform my job duties that are mandated by law. Not a choice, not because I want to. There's a couple of things that I do by choice. Traffic is one of them. I'm not mandated to do that by law. And I do animal control for the county. I'm not mandated to do that by law. That's a responsibility for the board. But as an agreement, I agree to do it because we write the citations and we can go out and enforce that law that needs to be enforced. But I'm not mandated to do those things. Um, I think it's kind of shameful for a commissioner to go to a meeting um, in this state with other elected officials from other counties, um, board of commissioners from other counties, whenever they have training, and the first thing they do is start attacking the sheriff of this county. Um, I also think it's shameful that family members of a commissioner um, would go to a meeting um, not set up meeting but a group of people and start talking about uh, budget issues that the sheriff might have or might not have um, if I've got five hundred thousand dollars in surplus that I don't use to run the sheriff's office I'd love to know where it's at because I would definitely give it back if I didn't use it 
I wouldn't ask for it. If I didn't need it in a budget, I wouldn't put it in a budget. If it didn't take it to run the sheriff's office and serve the people of this county, I wouldn't ask for it. Um, and to go to other department heads in this county and tell them that I failure to be willing to reduce my budget is somehow hurting them and that's my intention is to hurt them by not reducing my budget but they'll have to do it more so because I won't. That's pretty shameful to tell another department head that. I work with all the department heads in this county um, and I do a lot of things to help offset costs in this county so that these other agencies can run also just like mine and they do things just as like they manage the money for the people and the taxpayers of this county. Um, the sheriff's offices and the sheriff is mentioned over 600 times in Georgia law that we're to do or shall not choose but shall do things in, in the statute. It's not a choice that I do the things I do other than what I told you I did. And also just in the sheriff's handbook that we get are given out by the sheriff's association there's 65 mandates just listed in that handbook. And to follow up with that, it says, if any sheriff or deputy fails to comply with any of these duties, he shall be fined for contempt and is subject to removal. I don't want to be removed from this office because I don't do my job. People in this county elected me to be the sheriff and also to get up here and fight for these ladies and gentlemen out here to do the work for the people of this county. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to get up here and represent them just like I do the residents of this county. To give you an idea of the crisis that law enforcement has been in this state, just 24 counties I called and got the stats on. Chris County, seven deputies and four jailers short. Tiff County, six deputies, 11 jailers short. Worth County, five deputies, two investigators, one narcotic, four jailers short. The list goes on, nine deputies in Lowndes County, 39 jailers in Lowndes County. Randolph County, two to three deputies, Sumter County, seven, Dodge County, six, it just goes on and on. Turner County's not got to open. Okay, that's a contribute to what they do and that they want to be here and they want to do the work they do. And I, hopefully it's a contribute to the environment I create for them. They got good equipment. When you say the sheriff spends money around here, I do on things. They're sitting right here. I spend the money so that they can get out and do the job for the people of this county. I make sure they got good equipment because they get out there and put a vest on and carry a gun and try to protect lives in this county. And it's, and it's a disgrace that, that someone would go out and not give me the opportunity to defend myself at a dinner table whenever I can do it in here. And that's why I'm doing it here. No disrespect to y'all, but this public needs to hear me defend what I do. And it's a shame that I have to, but I do. The budget in the ACCG handbook says constitutional officers are charged by law to perform their duties and depend upon the board of commissioners to adequately fund them. While not obligated to give constitutional officers whatever they claim to need, the board of commissioners is charged by law to properly fund the constitutional officers. And that's not just me, there's other constitutional officers in this county also. Setting the budget, the process of passing the budget begins with the submission of a proposed budget by the various departments and by the constitutional officers, which I have done. I submit a budget every year and it's based on the needs or either the prior year's spending. Um, constitutional officers must include amount of anticipated revenues by source and amount budgeted for expenditure. I did not know that. I didn't know I had to tell you where I get my money from when it comes in, but you all know that. You all know that these ladies and gentlemen out here get out on that interstate and, and go out and work traffic every day and put their lives on the line to write citations. We don't collect that money, you're right. The court collects that money, but let them collect something without a ticket in the hopper. They're putting their lives on loan, put their tickets in there, but they do an service for the community, the biggest thing. They don't just put back in the community the funds, they give us a service. So if I had a man come mow my yard and I had to pay him $20 and he sold my grass clippings and made $40 and gave me the $40 back, I'd do that every day. That's what we do. We don't cost the taxpayers this county nothing. The services we give them plus what we give you back is a contribute to what we do. Any budget approved by the Board of Commissioners must be reasonable and must provide reasonable, sufficient funds to allow constitutional officers to discharge his or her legal duties. There is a fine line between providing what a Board of Commissioners believes is a reasonable budget and dictating to a constitutional officer how to perform his or her statutory duties. On one hand, in order for the Board of Commissioners to make an educated decision about what is a reasonable budget, which I'm going to do tonight. I hope I give you all the information that you'll know. 
The board should know about the types of services that a constitutional officer provides, the impact of the state and federal mandates, the workload of the constitutional officer and the budgets of the other county officials in similar situations, situated counties. On the other hand, that knowledge naturally may result in the board commission having opinions about how, how a constitutional officer could perform his or her duties more effectively and more efficiently with less staff or current equipment or different equipment. However, trying to make a constitutional officer accept those opinions could run afoul of the prohibition against dictating to an officer how to perform his or her duties. There's a lawsuit, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Attorney. Um, Chatham County, Sheriff St. Lawrence against Chatham County, a percentage across the board reduction in all county department budgets was not deemed acceptable by the trial courts. The Chatham County Superior Court held that the Board of Commissioners failed to properly exercise their discretion by neglecting to consider the various needs of constitutional officers related to their county needs. So when you say across the board, the courts have already said that's not right. When we're talking about the jails and cutting $500,000 out of our jail budget, the sheriff as the chief jailer is responsible for the health, safety, and welfare of all prisoners. County government authorities and sheriffs have been successfully sued for jail conditions that adversely affect the health, welfare, or rights of inmates because jail conditions or procedures have been the basis of a number of catastrophic awards to those suing the county. No effect should be spared. No effort should be spared to ensure proper funding of the county jail. That's an ACCG handbook. Not only for um, that, the sheriff is responsible not only for health of the inmates, but also maintaining, protecting the physical facility of the jail itself. Georgia State statute provides some guidance to standards for jail operating, permitting to such matters, uh, pertaining to such matters as inmate care, safety, security, and sanitation and health. Ladies and gentlemen, mental health transports. In 2016, we transported six. Today, we transported, as of today, we transported 26 this year. Total miles driven is 3,293 miles today. Back then, it was 668 miles. So we increase job load. We don't decrease it. So when you increase the workload that we have to do, it costs money. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. Total hours involved back then was 17 hours or 68 hours now. That's just on mental health transport. And it's only gonna get worse in case you don't keep up with what the state's doing about mental health. The sheriff's responsible for all those transports. Inmate transport, back then we transported 45. We've transported 114 so far this year. Total miles driven back then was 3,987. We transported, we've done 15,417 just in transports to courts and from other counties just so far this year. Total hours involved was 136 hours back then. It was 392 hours back now for just inmate transport. Inmate housing, bordering with other agencies that we housed for back then in 2011, 2012, when I took office was 301. We do 634 now per year for other agencies. City of Ashburn, uh, 595 is 204 up to date this year. The county would get 843 inmates then. It's 646 now and you say, well, it's a decrease. You know why it's a decrease? Because the legislators sent down mandates and our state court judge now won't keep people in the jail over a certain amount of hours before he takes a, a PR bond. So that's why those inmates aren't sitting in our jail. And that's not a bad thing, but it's still work people have to do that. We get eight per state and five. Total inmate housed in 2012 was 1,747. Today it's 1,489. Uh, no, correct me, a correction on that. It's 1,524 as of today. Medical expenses. In 2011 was 67,650. That's a medical contract that we have. It was uh, in 2022, it was 86,000. They all went up this year. It's 135,000 this year, which we'll probably have another increase next year because I negotiated with the doctor to not, not make me have to swallow that whole pill at one time. It was going to be 165,000, and we negotiated for him to only do 135 this year before that big increase. That's we got uh, other doctors to come give us a bid. They were all hired. They all said they were going up. Other counties, I talked to other sheriffs, they're all going up. Medical costs has increased just like everything else has. We served 568 warrants this year, 521 subpoenas this year. The food cost was $190,000. 
medical, 135,000. Animals, we picked up 298. Um, we make about seven trips to the animal shelter when we're counting in a month. We serve civil papers, 919 civil papers. Uh, we attended the court 144 days out of the year. Citations. In 2011, there was 10,555 citations written, and the collected fines for the county was about $2.7 million. In 2023, we've already wrote 15,000 tickets and got two more months that's got to be tallied in that. Um, so far, that's $6 million. And the average that the county gets out of those citations is 70% on average every year. That's going to be about 4.2 million, provided that the, the numbers are going to be where they are. The, and yes, these two months are going to be high, and I'll tell you why. 12 months out of the year, the winter months are not that much traffic out there. You don't have holidays going on. You don't have vacation going on. So these guys and girls out here to go out there and work every day can tell you just about to the day what's going to be a good day or bad day based on the time of the year it is. What months are going to be good and what are not going to be good. So yeah, we've been working hard for the last two. And I always, the chief dean, I have ever since I've been in office, has got out there and worked with those girls and guys out there on their state and shot lasers for them. So it ain't nothing new for us to do that. 911 calls. In 2016, there was 33,606 calls in the 911 center. 2023, there's been 43,367. You see the increase? It's not going backwards, and it costs money to do the work. I have 53 employees. That's including 911, which y'all have so graciously let me manage 911 center. I appreciate that. I feel like it was a benefit to y'all and the taxpayers to not have to have a 911 director, a salary. Uh, I was able to put a lieutenant over that that's managed it very well. By your own admission and the other department heads admission, she works hard to get it done. Um, had 53 employees there. That's three million one hundred one dollars and four hundred seventy or four hundred seventy five. Y'all have 47 employees. The rest of the county combined have 47, I have 53. The, the budget for those 47 is 7,268,000. I only asked for 30% of the county's budget and employed 53 employees. I had the biggest fleet of vehicles, had the biggest maintenance, had the biggest maintenance on the jail. I, everything I do take a bigger bite because I have more employees, a bigger building, and I'm not. I'm not taking away from the other department heads. Don't think I'm doing that. I'm just taking up for what we do. I don't care what you give them as far as salary goes, as far as their budget goes. That's not my business. That's y'all's business. Mine is my business. And what the people in this county have voted for me to do is my business. Revenues brought in by the sheriff last year was 3.8 million. We house, or for housing inmates, we collected 300,000. We're on the line to do that this year, return key to you. Total revenues was 4 million one. That was last year. That's 39% of the county budget. Take 30% of it and give 39% back. That was last year. Our investigations. Theft and robberies were down. I'm gonna tell you why. I contribute to every one of them that's in here. They patrol more. The mayor of Sycamore is in, I mean the mayor of Rebecca's in here. Mayor, you seen them patrolling over there a lot. They are shooting lay dogs. Right. Thank so you all. They patrol more and I contribute that the crime rate going down here because they control they patrol more. I don't want to be like some counties and uh, surrounding us that takes 45 minutes for a deputy to get to a call because of manpower issue. I'm gonna fight and stop that. People expect me to do that. They elected me to do it. Deaths and robberies are 54, fraud and financial crimes are 24, burglaries 13, sex crimes 12, crimes against children 14. And the time it takes, the time it takes for investigators to collect evidence and gather stuff from, from uh, cell phones, from banks, it takes time. It takes three weeks on minimum to get that investigated to a point where they're sitting there waiting on other information from these other agencies. Vehicle thefts, entered autos are five, weapons, firearms related 11, crimes against elderly two, seized 30 firearms, illegal firearms this year. <clears throat> the national average in 2011 for crimes being cleared was 18.6%. Kearney County Sheriff's Office was 40% higher. 
Thank you guys for doing that. Every one of you in here. 2015, it was 19.4% clear. This is national average. This is the FBI statistic. Turner County SO is approximately 50% higher than that. 2019 was last year's statistic was calculated by the FBI. They haven't went any further. They said they're overwhelmed, so they don't have another average. But in 2023, they're not complete, but it was 17.2 in 2019. Turner County SO was 50% higher. And this year, we're on track to be 45% higher clearance rate as the year goes. In 2011, a Dodge Charger cost $22,600. It's over $38,000 this year. That's a Dodge Charger if you can find them. That's why we got Camaros out there, because we had to find them last year. We had to find vehicles to drive. Cost to outfit, outfit the new vehicles were $9,609 in. Today, it costs $15,719 after we buy the car to put the equipment in and equip it and get the stuff that it has to go in. Cost to outfit a deputy in 2011 was $1,744. Today it costs $3,067. A pair of pants that cost $50 back then cost $80 today. And we go with the lowest one because there are some that cost $115, $120. The cost of a gallon of fuel with them was $2.54, it's $3.20 now. The gallons of fuel used then was $26,752. Today it's $37,815 with two more months left to go on. Total cost for fuel used per year was sixty-seven thousand back then. It's one hundred twenty-one thousand with two more months to go this year. Average patrol vehicles mileage per month. Each one of these guys and girls out here travel about thirty-five hundred miles a month. Average patrol vehicle mileage per year is forty-two thousand. Total miles every one of them travel in here is five hundred eighty-eight thousand. That's for all cars that patrol in this county and doing the work of this county and for the taxpayers. And for this board and for me. Now I submitted a budget and I submitted a budget that had totals. This board some years back decided that we would put the jail fund budget together because of the percentage of tech, uh, collections on traffic fines. That's still in there so that four point six million dollars that you see has that three hundred sixty thousand. By, by the way that that jail fund is used to offset costs for the taxpayers of this county. It's used to help run the jail and do the things that I don't have to come ask the taxpayer for, you the board for. That's a great benefit that I have, but it's written by law. It's not something that I chose, it's something the lawmakers decided to do to help offset costs for jail. They knew it was a burden. <clears throat> Last year, y'all agreed to give me two deputies and equip them and give the raises. So y'all got an email yesterday that showed that I was over on my budget. If you go and add back what y'all agreed to give me, plus the raises that y'all gave, you'll see that that number's not near as significant as it shows that it is. I put retirement costs in my budget, which was $97,000. That was the increase. If y'all wanna take that out, that's up to y'all. That's something that I really don't control. That's something y'all negotiate with the ACCG. Uh, so, you know, it's been in the budget before, it's been taken out of the budget before, but if you, if you want me to reduce, that's the only thing I'm willing to reduce is to take it out because you're going to have to pay it to keep the retirement up. So I, and that's up to y'all totally. Um, things that I choose to do that I'm not mandated to do, you certainly have the right to tell me that you want me to cut that out of my budget. If that's what you choose to do, I will make appropriate cuts. But if you're worried about this year having to take away from an agency, any agency in this county, um, and keep up with the cost of living that every county incurs in this state, and you take away that $40 that that grass cutter's giving you, and you cut that back to $10, and it's costing you $20, next year you're gonna to have to find even more. And that's all I'm, you know, I'm not in the business of making money, I'm in the business of providing service. The court collects the money. But I write the tickets that go to the court. And these ladies and gentlemen out here put that vest on and that gun on right and put their lives on the line for that. And they and they gladly do it and come in every day. And they got a smile on their face and they do the work. And I'm gonna represent them. And I appreciate the board, the commissioners, y'all, like 
again, y'all have always worked with the sheriff. And y'all got a y'all y'all got out and campaigned to do what you do. I did the same thing and it's to make hard decisions too. But the hard decision for me is to to make the appearance that I'm bucking y'all, but I'm gonna stand up for my budget. I need that budget to run the sheriff's office and, and I'm I'm you know, I don't want it to sound like I'm drawing a line in the sand, but I have to have that to operate, to manage the budget. I have to have what I asked for, I wouldn't ask for. So it's your responsibility as the elected officials also to make sure the taxpayers just kind of get the protection that they elected to do me to do. So having said that, I appreciate your time. I appreciate what you ladies and gentlemen do uh, for me and for the taxpayers of this county, and I'm gonna fight for you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. <coughs> Thank you. The uh, I'll just have a little quick response. I think somebody else may have to have something to do. But we did not want to hold them back. The uh, I get it, trust me. We have always looked after you, in my opinion. We have all done this. We're, we have, we are, have to balance the budget. It's that. We have so much money to deal with, and unfortunately, our salary is not going to do it for us. But the, uh, we're, we're looking at everybody's budgets, yours included, just like every other department. We either raise taxes or we cut somewhere. We're not even suggesting cutting the way I look at it. We were just trying to get everybody to maintain where they was at is all I thought we was asking. But we're going to look over budgets and we'll go from it. I mean, we're going to look at everybody's budgets and do. But I, we, my opinion, we've done good over the years. We've got a very large department and bring in a lot of money. The, uh, let, let I, I thought we'd done good, but I, I just felt like he's coming on. Mr. Chairman, I'm standing up. I, listen, I, I'm not meaning to be adversarial, but whenever it's told out in the public that I that I do the things I do, then I then I'm going to defend myself. And it, and when Ben's in here with a camera that the public can see, and I can defend myself because I'm not sitting at the coffee table when it's talked about. Nobody gives me that opportunity, so I'm going to take the opportunity when I can and address it. So if you take an offense to it. I'm sorry. It's it's to defend what I do for the public and to defend these ladies and gentlemen in here. It's not to step on any of y'all's toes or stab at you. We have worked together, but it's a two-way street. I work just as hard when you ask me to, and and done exactly what I said I would do. Um, Cook County employs almost the same amount of employees I do. When you say that I have a big department, they have about the same population, and their budget's five million dollars and two million dollars different. So when we're talking about comparison. They also have traffic units on the interstate, but they don't have it three. So I'm not a total tax burden like 90% of the counties in this state who cost their county taxpayers every 100% dollar they spend. Um, so I don't mean to sound adversary, but I think it's a disgrace to me if you go out and tell the citizens that's one thing and don't give me the opportunity to defend myself. So that's what I'm doing. I don't, I don't frankly, if you do it, I don't appreciate you doing it. I want to be able to defend what I do. Um, and if I've got $500,000 in fat, tell me where it's at. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, my fat's your fat. But like I said, I'm pretty sure someone wanted to respond. No, I, I, listen, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Sheriff, I think you and I have had some pretty candid conversations, sometimes heated, and that's good, debate is good. Um, but the one thing that we've agreed on is the importance of your office and public safety and the role that they play in this community. No, no one is diminishing that or saying that they don't do a good job. I, I personally have not said that. I can't speak for anyone else, but I've not said that. Um, my, my comments, and I've said this to you personally, is not with you. I've told people that you're a great sheriff and I think you do a good job. My issue has been with the board and un, our unwillingness to try to find a way to give you what you need to be successful, but keep our spending in check. That That has been my concern. And so that, that's the only thing I can say to respond to your comments. I don't take them personal. I'm just saying that's what I've said. And it's things that, that I've said to you personally. Um, we just have a spending problem. We've got to figure out how to get it under control. And sometimes that means that everybody's got to take a little bit of piece of the pie to help us do that, or we're faced with raising taxes, which is another thing that we don't want to do. So it's a difficult place that we're in, but I don't think anyone has questioned the capabilities or 
the service that, that any of the public safety officers provide. Yeah, yeah my view is we can't keep on ten million dollars of balance of service. And my view is we gotta cut service. I don't care what we got cut at that that department, you and that department, our department, what this little county cannot keep on doing what we're doing every year. Are oh, we gonna get in deep for the people every year? And we got about a million dollars of in reserve now, and we take this million dollars, turn the county gonna be broke. So everybody, people elect us to do our job too. So everybody in our collect, elected to do their job. And I'm gonna let the county commission do my job for the best of turn the county. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna try to do the best I can I always have the best I can. And I always have look out for the employees. Everyone already know. But for us, if we got too much service, I don't care what we got at the Cadillac. We got to do something. We can't keep on doing what we do. We all do an extra job, super job. And we cannot keep on doing what we do. We can't afford to raise taxes. I'm not gonna vote for that. I vote special service. I might die with a heart attack if you got to come get me, <laughs> but I'm ready to cut the service. So, yeah. The problem we got in the county is we're operating on 18 year old taxes. Our taxes have not been up in almost 18 years. And everybody here, everybody in the county, everybody in the world knows how much expenses have gone up in 18 years. I think this board, this board has done a hell of a job by not going up on taxes in 18 years. Can you imagine what stuff, how much, four times, at least what equipment costs, cars cost, gas costs, tires cost, you know, everything on and on and on you buy has gone quadrupled. And we have held, we have towed the line on our taxes. And now it's pretty much caught up with us. And when you've got a $6 million surplus from 18 years ago, you're paying too much taxes. If you wasn't paying them too much taxes, your surplus wouldn't be six, seven million dollars. So in order to keep from going down, going up on taxes, we have had to pull money out of reserves. And that's just the facts. And once you keep pulling down and down and down, and ain't putting nothing else in the barrel, the barrel's gonna go dry. Well, the barrel, you, we can see the bottom of it now pretty good. So the public and everybody else needs to understand I don't want to go up on taxes. I have to pay taxes. I don't want to go up on. But it comes to the point that you're gonna to have to pay the plate. You either gonna to have to pay a little more in taxes to have EMS come out there if you have a heart attack, if somebody's breaking in your house, if your house is on fire, on and on. You've got to keep up with the times on fix, you know, what we're doing. Um, like I said, I don't want to go up on taxes, but it's, it's probably the time that's probably here. And if we do go up, if we have to go up on taxes to balance the budget, I talked to Joe Wright with GMAS about the uh, reevaluation, and that's going to be considerably more on the taxpayers. I know back in 2000, I think it was 2008, the, the commissioners went up three mills on taxes to balance the budget. The next year, they come back and cut three mills because of the reevaluation, the last one that was done 12, I think 12 years ago. So, you know, we may have to look at doing something like that. I know it's unpopular, but it is what it is. And, and one more thing. Uh, if you think about a meal on taxes, one meal, if you own a $200,000 house, a piece of property, fair market value is $200,000. If you go up one meal, it's going to cost you 80 bucks a year. So it really ain't a, a meal of taxes per person ain't a tremendous amount of money unless you're a multi-casillionaire. You know. That's all I got to say, Mr. Chairman. Well, me, myself, well, y'all move me. I'm not up for cutting services. None whatsoever. But I think raising taxes is going to help us out a lot. Y'all, I'd rather raise the taxes than the cut services. So we need, we need y'all. We need every last one of you. We don't need to be short one, two, or three. We need all of y'all. We're gonna survive. So I'm gonna 
I'm ready for me myself. I like to write down. I'm ready to move tight. Keep it in service. That's just me. All right. Everybody's got their chest clear. No. Yeah. I'll wait to public comments to speak at the table. <laughs> All right. Uh, under new business, consider proof of uh, proof of quick claim deeds, transfer deed from Turner County to Turner County Veteran Authority and authorized chairman to sign deed in Madison County. Last week we put a hold on that. We talked to the development authority. They're willing to pay the money for paving the road. I think that's that's just not here. I think it was six. Sixty-five thousand or sixty-five thousand instead of hundred and some change. Yeah, somewhere in that area. We had we had worked out a deal. It was eighty thousand. We'd worked out a deal with them to knock off five percent off the total project, so the development authority would get be getting the benefit, make it go down a little easier of Thank that you. sixty thousand dollars. So the we, we development will, authority is going to pay that. They've agreed. The their executive director has agreed to do it. The board, which I sit on, Brad and Keith, it's more, I think everybody's going to vote on it. I would just say we go ahead and pass it under the condition that it passes Tuesday. It's going to be Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. So we, we could vote to do it and not sign it till we get a check. If y'all are good. I'll make a motion. We approve it. A motion and second to approve deeding the property back to the development authority under the condition that they pay for the paving of the road. Is there any other discussion? Not all in favor? All opposed. Item two is consider approving medical benefits for Turner County fiscal year 23 and 24. Ms. Cherish. And, and, I, and I, had, I had thought. We might be better off going just like I think some of the others and Miss Green with the lower amount, but I'll let you explain. Yes, sir. Thank you, um, Chair, um, Board, and um, Public. Um, I made a recommendation on last week that we um, go with recommendation of a buffer and stay with um, Sydney because it's our current carriers, but I know there were some questions about um, providers in our area. So I did reach out to Mr. White and she sent me um, the network analysis for Sydney and Edna. Now, Edna did come in cheaper than uh, Sydney, but we were worried about switching carriers because that would be a lot of work. But once she sent the information, it looks like we may have better coverage and more providers and networks if the board um, gets with the city because it'll be a cost savings and access to um, a greater provider network. I've sent you all um, that provider list for Edna and Sydney. Also have a copy of the bill. Cigna is an increase of 6.5 percent, which would be an additional eighty thousand dollars a year, roughly. But Edna um, is an increase of 1.36 percent, which would be only sixteen thousand dollars, seventeen, roughly, a year. Mr. Chair, I just have one question. If we go with Edna, it sounds like a, it's a better deal. Would we be able to avoid giving passing on some of this cost to the employees? That would be up to the board. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That, that would be my recommendation as well, because the cost for um, Motion and second to go with Aetna and not pass on any financial, more financial burden. Oh, more, but we're going to still pay the more. The hundred dollars. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll continue to pay what they're paying today. We will not add to what they're paying. Continue, I think it was hundred dollars a month. Yes, hundred dollars. Fifty dollars pay period. That's right. We would continue with that, but not add to. As last week we was talking about the. And 300 for? 300 for? Sorry, so I'm at, you want me to remind you my motion? Yeah. Wait, wait, I've got to start over. 
Okay. Okay. Make sure we're clear. I, mo I move that we switch to Aetna as our medical provider. Do not add to or increase the payments that the employees are paying for that and that we maintain the $300 a month for those individuals that are eligible for and take Medicare in lieu of our insurance. Both ways. Both ways. Does that work? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Motion and second. Go with Aetna. Yes. Not increase the amount the employee pays, stay with 300 for the ones getting off and 300 for, well, both ways for the Medicare and for if you want to get off and get on your family's plan. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor? All opposed? <coughs> Item number three is consider approving the Georgia Indigent Defense Service Agreement fiscal year 23-24 in the amount of 88,893.52 and authorized chairman sign on behalf. I think it only went up like two thousand dollars. No, we found out different. Uh oh. Eight, well, where did eight thousand? Eight thousand. 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 With Georgia Indian Defense in the amount of eighty-eight thousand eight ninety-three fifty-two fiscal years twenty-three twenty-four. Is there any discussion? If not all in favor? All questions. Let's see. Okay. Consider delinquent garbage accounts. The uh, <coughs> we discussed last week, and I think I talked to Mr. Christian. The uh, Taking what we say, take twenty or thirty dollars. Yeah, the, the twenty dollars, Mr. Chair, was the actual billing for the next month. So we'll say on the bottom billing. So only the previous balances prior to the twenty dollars would be looked at. So there's a lot of them on there that just said twenty dollars. So it's assuming the next month. Take so twenty dollars off everybody. Yes, and send the. I know I got some disagreements. And send just twenty dollars. So that's what it's a billing issue. Billing issue. I tried to get forward, couldn't get forward. The uh and and, and turn the rest <coughs> over to Mr. Blake, Latrice, Mr. Blake, and Cherish. Remove the ones that have passed on that we cannot collect. Any other thing and then let let them touch it. Let them click. You know, just try to get as much as we can get out of work deals, whatever. That was what we discussed last week. I'm making that in the form of a motion to do that. A second motion. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Three, two, and this here. So get to work. The county manager's comments. Thank you, um, Chairman. I only have a few things. Um, after I did a little bit earlier, I was requesting um, a, a budget during the meeting. Um, as you all can see, uh, my recommendations and, and the things that I'm proposing are very contentious, and I feel that it is um, in the best interest of the board, the department heads, and the officers and the public that we have further discussions on how to best um, balance this budget. So I want to see uh, Thursday at four would be great for some of us. Tell me this week. This week. What is y'all's thoughts? Good. Good. Thursday at four at the computer office up there. In the little room, that's where we can't get so many people in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we shouldn't say that. <laughs> the, uh, is that everybody good with that? Okay. Four, four o'clock Thursday.
another comment. She's gonna let me go first. I right, appreciate it. So um, as a taxpayer, over the years, as Mr. Jim uh, alluded to, um, there's been a lot of things that's been able to put money up and things like that. And y'all done away with schools and kind of money. But as a taxpayer, I understand. Um, and I'm not speaking for all the taxpayers, but I'm speaking for me as a taxpayer. I paid my fair share of taxes, always paid them. And, uh, and uh, my garbage bill, I pay it every month too. But I do it because I expect service if I need one of these guys to know it's coming to my house. If my taxes go up, I understand that the inflation goes up every year, it don't go backwards either. All the service don't. And I know y'all don't want to raise taxes and y'all don't want to tell the public that, hey, we got to do it to keep up with inflation. But these folks that work for y'all and me, uh, if you're going to keep giving them raises, you got to get the money somewhere. And I'm maxed out. I can't give you any more to give raises. I've got y'all gracious enough to give me two extra people and we're going to produce. We're doing it. Um, at the end of the year, it's going to be the proof that I'm keeping my word. But that's not even the point. The point is, is that next year, you're going to have to be hunting for a raise if you give it to the employees. In the next year, there's people that live in other counties in here, and my employees that pay $2,200 in taxes on an acre or a half acre of land that a house sits on. Tish County and Lee County. Um, they're, both of the guys are in here that do that, and, and they're the family. I pay that much for 60 acres of land and two houses sitting on in this county. I'm not mad about the fact that you haven't raised taxes, but I ain't going to be mad if you do it either because the people that serve me deserve it, and we deserve to have the best people responding to our house. And if we don't keep those best people, that's the kind of shitty service we're going to get. We're going to get shitty service. So, you're, you're, like I said before, you got out and campaigned to get that job. Make that hard decision if you have to, and I don't mind telling the taxpayers because I'm, I know election year next year for me. And if I, whatever I say affects me, and I ain't in charge of raising taxes, but if I was and I was sitting where you are and I wanted to take care of my employees, I would raise it a little at a time every year, and not have to wait till I had to have a big chunk. So I'm just telling those taxpayers get get my taxes to make sure that these these folks EMS fired and, and wreck. You know, if we're gonna represent wreck and won't wreck, we're gonna have to pay for it. And that means get the taxpayers to pay for it if you want to get it for them. So that's me as a citizen. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. And I want to follow him by saying I agree with the tax thing. I agree with increasing the taxes a little bit every year because that's what happens. We have inflation. We have to admit that and we have to like make up for that. But in the meantime, you guys are a civil duty. Your jobs are civil duty. You should volunteer your money. It may not be a whole lot, but it's something to get us started. And it's something to prove to these people in our county that y'all are gonna step up and actually like, give your money up. Be the example. We'll have to take that to the money. <laughs> 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 City of Rebecca. My councilman has said we're going to have a shindig July the 15th down at Personal Park. And if I don't fall on my face, we're going to have a shindig at Personal Park July the 15th. And that's going to be our July the 4th. And uh, Keith Q's catering. This is my first go round actually being the doer. Don was there last year. And I wanted to make sure all y'all knew and you was invited, because we had a small crowd last year, we gave you away food. I mean, uh, you know, we run out of food, we just shoot the bull or drink Pepsi or whatever, you know. And uh, I'm looking for some singers, something like that. So anyway, they hard to come by. So y'all all invited. And like I said last week, thank you for what you do for us in Rebecca, okay? What's your name? We probably gonna start around 11, eight to 12. Something like that. If I can, what's that? Have duck and no. Nope, I've been in it before, but every one of them come off. <laughs> 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 y'all, I, I got some signs up at City Hall there that says 4th of July. If you get lost in Rebecca, y'all don't fall. If you're coming on 112, the last city street on the right before you cross the railroad track and go straight on down there. So. Right. All welcome to show up, come 
They show up, don't show out. So I hope some of the law will bear with us in case somebody shows out later. Any other public comments? I got one other thing. Yes, sir. Uh, I've heard today that, and I'm not 100% sure, but actually may kill me. The deep peanut is going to be put on the stand Monday. That would be awesome. And she's going to have a, she's going to plan a big thing afterwards. We're planning after, afterwards. a big shindig for Peanut as well. It's going to be a show of time. She's going to have so a big party. I'll make sure to invite everybody. Make sure we get the gate open. I see the gate's closed down there. So we yeah, yeah, they come in there with Ryan. We'll move together. Any other? Yeah, if not, you are adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.